Welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. This is Eli for MoboxGraphics.com. Alright, our first step is adding our two key components that will create the animation. Go up here to the render settings and set up your output dimensions. I recommend keeping this rather small, especially as a first test, because rendering can take such a long time. And also a very important step is to adjust the frame range down here. Right now it just wants to render the current frame we are looking at. So select preview range instead and double check if it goes from 0 to 120. Also make sure the frame step is always on 1. If this would be something like 5 it would only render out every 5th frame. Now here under save set the format to PNG. This is a great format to keep a nice quality without a huge file size. And as you probably know, PNG is an image format and not a video format. In Cinema 4D you can render videos, but it is so much safer to render separate images and stitch them together later on. Because rendering can take so long, you often get in the situation where you need to pause it or render it in parts at night. And then it comes in handy when you can just continue rendering from the last frame of your last render session. Also don't forget to pick a place to save these. And make sure you create a new folder for it, because we will have 120 new files right now. And that is basically it. If you click on the picture viewer render right here, you can see how every frame is rendered and how long it took to do that. So let the computer do its thing and I'll see you when it's done. Great, I hope that didn't take too long on your computer. A nice thing about this picture viewer, by the way, is that you can already play the animation by clicking the play button right here, even when it's still rendering, by the way. But to turn this all into a nice GIF, we are going to use Photoshop. And there are a lot of free alternatives for this. A quick Google search will give you plenty of options. So in Photoshop, let's create a new document with the dimensions we rendered the animation in. And my interface is currently set up for motion editing. So if you want this too, you can go up here and select the motion workspace. Anyway, let's go into file and open and find your images. Select the first one and make sure to check the image sequence option. We rendered at 30 frames per second, so we can keep it at 30. And now we have the animation down here on the timeline. And this is the perfect time to adjust the brightness and maybe add some more saturation to the image. Anything you like. And when you're done, we are going to save this to the GIF file. So go up here to File and Export and pick the Save for Web option. A new window will pop up and you can just copy whatever you see on my screen if it's different from yours. But the most important parts are the amount of colors and that it's actually set to a GIF and that it's set to looping forever down here. You might also want to pay attention to the file size at the bottom left of the screen. If it gets close or even over 10 megabytes or something, I recommend lowering the quality settings so it's a little bit easier for the web browser to play the GIF. Now as a last step, just click the save button and you're good to go. So let's take a look at this in our browser and we can see it looks just fine right now. So that is it for this tutorial, I really hope you learned something new today. And if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, just let me know. And it would also really help us out if you leave the like if you enjoyed this video. And I hope to catch you in the next one.